We're back with producer, filmmaker, and artist, Edgy Lee. You know, in the introduction, I had said that you're the leading female filmmaker. Did you ever feel that being female made a difference, or do you think that it's your purpose and passion that makes you a leader in the industry? First of all, I think it does make a difference, your gender. And most women would say, I think the same thing in this industry. Most men would say, no, it doesn't make a difference. But it does make a difference. Um, the way I had to learn how to relate to my own crew, the way I had to prove myself and still do have to prove myself to, to people in my crew, you know, not everybody, but some people have, you know, are not used to it, that I'm a female. And when you take a directive from a female for some people, it's, it's, it's hard. The other uh, your part to your question, I don't think that you can consciously really mold the end portion of your career. I mean, you can try to, you can set yourself out for a goal, but when you're in the arts, if you're not flexible, I don't think you're going to have an easy time. And that's part of the, the, the upside to being in the arts and really part of the detriment because it's not easy. For some people, it's not easy not knowing the end point. You, know, you have an idea. When you go out to make a documentary film, for instance, you, can't, you, you work with a script, but you cannot dictate what somebody's going to say. Like, you don't know what I'm going to say next. Like, I, yike. <laughs> um, with people, real people in real situations, you can't even physically control what it looks like. So you try your best. So you just capture what you can. That's pretty much, I think, how I approach a career. You have an idea of what you want and where you want to go and the, the difference that you want to make or the effect you'd like to make. But if you cannot, if your personality is not such that you can roll with change and things that are unexpected, then you're going to have a harder time. When did you make this move into filmmaking? Because it, it says here in your bio that you were doing modeling and mm -hmm. uh, playing the piano and violin. You know, what was some of that uh, like? Um, if I can tell you, I, I must have gone on hundreds and hundreds of interviews for national commercials. You know, some I got, some, most of them I didn't get. And at the time when I was much younger, uh, my agent was Nina Blanchard. She was like one of the biggest agents in L.A. And she sent me, she signed me. She said, you know, Edgy, you're never going to make as much money as my leggy blondes. And I'll never forget that line, like, what did she mean by leggy, first of all? Oh, oh, taller, taller, bigger. Um, and then I thought, okay, well, she was still signing me. And I, and I got it. I got it then. It was like there was nobody, like China Machado, which was like in the 50s, there was nobody that looked like me. And the only girl of color at the time was um, one of uh, Quincy Jones's daughter. Jolie Jones was another model in the same agency. But it's like we were the only two. And then there was another girl that came on. And then another year, another girl who was like Hoppe. But there really wasn't what you see today. And I'm so happy to see that today. So when I came up in front of the camera, it was a ch great challenge. But I knew from the beginning that that was not the kind of challenge where I was not ready to you know, stay any longer in New York or go to Europe and work. It was not my thing because I always felt like... I was in front of the camera, but I was at the bottom of the totem pole. I didn't want to be directed. I wanted to direct. <laughs> or I thought, God, that's really lousy dialogue. How can, they, how can they be spending all that money on this stuff? So I always knew that I wanted more and I, I could contribute more. So I got myself from in front of the camera behind. Could you give us a quick message to inspire people, especially the younger generation? It's not about the money. It's about what you feel your purpose and what your passion is? I think, especially for local kids, that I see that there is a lack of confidence, and I don't know why. You know, when we grow up here, we grow up here with so many more tools than the rest of them, and I mean the rest of the country and may, many parts of the world. When you grow up and you go to school and you're, you're understanding and learning automatically how to get along with people from different, vastly different cultures, and it's an unspoken talent and a sensitivity that we have. When you know that you live on islands and we have limited resources and we got to sustain this and you have elders and you understand what it is like to respect them and yet lead your independent life and still you're living on an island, okay, that is a lot of knowledge and a lot of smart, I'd say, um, you know, common sense, which is lacking today. So I say to kids that, you know, understand that you have a lot, when you, you know, whether you go to college or not. You know, you, want, you have more than most, and you have such great um, ability. You know, don't, don't, um, don't cut yourself short. You know, I think that, I think that our kids deserve to, under, you know, to see more, that they, they should have greater confidence in what they have already. 
without traveling away even. You know, and if, and if you're away, come back home. Like, the water's fine here. You know, we need you. Thanks for joining us today on Greater Good Radio. For more information or a transcript of today's show, please visit us online at greatergoodradio.com. This is your host, Evan Leong and Carrie Leong, saying please join us next time for another episode of Greater Good Radio Hawaii.